All right, everybody, welcome back. Today in the shop, we have a Roush Mustang. 2005, four, six. AC won't kick on. I did some uh, mobile service with this vehicle and I checked the switches out. Switches are good. Says he had it in storage for two years and it worked when he put it in storage, but then when he brought it out, won't get the air to kick on. One of the things I noticed right off the bat was when I looked at his controls, the uh, blend door knob might need to be replaced because it's a little bit on the loose side. But when we hook the gauges up in a minute to get a preliminary reading for today, you're going to see that uh, he's got hardly any pressure in here. So uh, I think he might just need a charge. But uh, let's see what we can get into today. I got our gauge set set up and we're gonna be uh, doing some uh, injection today we're gonna use our new pag oil injector on this car so you can see our gauges right there a little high for you guys but uh, I'll do what I can to make sure that you can keep an eye on these readings while we're doing it so what we need to do now is we need to get the gauges installed get it started Pull a reading off of uh, our high side and our low side. And then uh, if our readings are where they were the other day when I checked it, because uh, mind you, when you do AC work, it has to be in the shade. Uh, temperature, you know, you can do it in any temperature above 60 degrees. And if you live in a humid climate, the relative humidity has to be... Uh, feels like temperature has to be less than 10 degrees from the actual temperature so what i mean by that is if it's 80 degrees outside and your relative humidity makes it feel like it's 92 that's 12 degrees higher than the actual temperature you don't want to do it you want to wait till it gets as close to actual temperature as possible last time i checked it was 80 88 degrees no, 81 degrees feels like 88. Yeah. So we're within our margin. Plus it's getting cooler. So perfect time to do it. Set your gauges up with the car off. You always want to do that. You want to pay attention to where your high side and your low side are. On this car and on most Mustangs, this is your high side. It's right off the accumulator. And then your high side is going to be over here. And your compressor sits down below. So your low side's over there. High side's over here. So your lines are going to be crossed every which way. So let's get our low side hooked up. You just want to plug the ends on. You don't really need to um, turn the valves down right now. We're just getting it hooked up. Because you don't want to turn your valves down until you're started. So we'll get our gauges hooked up here. Also, if you're using dye, you want to wear gloves. So uh, if you happen to get some on, on your hands. Because this dye, it's kind of a pain to deal with. I think I've used dye like maybe one time. A lot of your refrigerants come with a dye in it. But so you want to just... So the other thing that was catching me the other day was when I did this. The uh, high side usually pops off real, real violently. And it didn't do that this time. So I'm going to back you up so you can see the gauges here. I'm going to zoom you in so you can see the gauges here. And I'm going to start the car up and then I'll take you off the pod and I'll show you an up close shot of the gauges. That way you can see where we're at with everything. So.
open up our low side first and then our high side. So you're gonna see this needle move first, then you're gonna see this needle move. We're not gonna turn on anything here because we're not putting anything in it. We're just gonna open up the valves on the, on the system. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to load a can, we're going to put it in here, we're going to see if we can get our gauges to read, and then here in a little bit we're going to actually, before we put the cans in, we're going to hook up our uh, thermometer inside the car. So let me go ahead and get a can set up here, show you how that works. kind of free on in your system you're going to need to get a can of refrigerant and you're going to need one of these this right here is called a can piercer you can get one self-sealing that works great I don't know if this is self-sealing because the last time I used this it was an utter catastrophe had free on everywhere. You take your line off the center here. You want to go ahead and you want to screw your can to it. When you inject this, you want to turn it upside down. Okay. So I'm going to go grab my can. I'm going to finish letting this car warm up. I'm going to go get my thermometer and we'll be right back. Okay, I've got my thermometer right here. Our outside temperature is about 82-ish. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the car. We're going to kind of use this as a... We're going to throw this in the center vent right here. But uh, because of how, the big, how big these vents are, we're going to have to leave it in the uh, cover here cover has an end on it that's covered that's uh, open so we can go ahead and we can put it inside this vent right here set it inside the vent just like that turn your knob to where you can see what you're looking at and that's the temperature inside the car so we're about almost to a hundred degrees inside the car so we're going to check back to that we got our research door open and we got our AC turned on. So when we start fi firing off the uh, Freon, you should hear the AC compressor cycle. It'll click. So I'm going to get you where you can see the gauges. Which the gauges have come up just slightly, not enough to be of any importance. I'm going to kind of scoot you a little closer here so you can see. There, a little bit better. All right, so we're right about 11 on the low side, about the same on the high side. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pierce our can, and we're gonna open up this valve right here. Do not ever open this valve up for any reason whatsoever. All right, so let's go ahead and put some uh, Freon in the system. Open up our valve. 
And you're going to see in here, you're going to see it go between gas and liquid. So, go ahead and open up our valve here. You want to hold the can upside down after you pierce it. And if you know you got it right, when you start seeing some stuff coming out. And we got a little bit in there. There's something wrong with our uh, canister here. Hang on a minute, guys. We're not... I'm going to check that and make sure that's on top. Because you're not supposed to lose any Freon out of that line right there. But we did put a little in the system. We got to get a little bit more in there for it to activate the... All right, let me fix our technical difficulty and I'll be right back. All right, we had a tiny piece of dirt inside our hose, causing it to escape. So, let's go back to what we were doing. Open up your valve. That's the other thing too, if you start seeing Freon coming out of here, that tells me there's something wrong with this fitting. So let's go ahead and open up our can. That, see, now we're working. See, we don't have anything coming out. Turn this down, flip it upside down. Oh, there goes our compressor. Our compressor's kicking on. Want to kind of shake this. Check your ends. Make sure our ends are staying tight. Yeah, there goes our compressor. We'll go ahead and let this can go down. And see now our pressures are coming up. You want to shake the can while you're doing this. See, we don't have any Freon coming out, so we're doing okay. It's all going in the system. You see how our high side's coming up? Or our low side's coming up? That's what we want. You want to shake this up. See, we got Freon coming through into the line there. Let's go ahead and keep, keep this as open as you can. Okay, we're pulling it. We're starting to pull the system down. So that means that we're getting fluid through the system. All right, we're going to go ahead and shut our can off. We're turn off our line. We're going to let it cycle for a little while. Make sure that we got it. I think this can's about empty. chill out over here for a minute while I let's go check our temperature in our car and see if we're getting cold starting to yeah it's getting cooler there's our gauge so far I'll zoom you back so you're not like it's starting to get cold in here yeah see it's coming down it's starting to come down Let's see if we can close some of these vents off here to kind of push this fluid through the one. Turn off our recirc door here. As it's cycling, our compressor is working because it's getting colder. So let's see where we're at on our gauges. See them cycling real quick. All right, that's going to kick off. All right, 
go. Our high side is starting to get pressure, so that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and see if there's anything left in this can, and if there's not, we'll hook another can to it and we'll put another can in it. We haven't introduced any dye into the system yet because I want to get the compressor to cycle first because you can't put dye in it until you get the system to cycle because otherwise the dye is just going to sit inside that accumulator and it's not going to circulate through the system. Our, our, our can's empty so we're going to go ahead and take this can off. To verify that the can's empty, we're going to turn it upside down. We're going to open our valve back up and we're going to see if we have any, uh, any left in it. I think it's empty. Yeah, it's empty. So we can go ahead and close our line off here. Now that we have cycling, we're going to remove our... Yeah, it sounds like she might be a little dry. So now that we got some Freon in the system, we're going to put some oil in. I only do... It's a 7 ounce system which is equal to one of these bottles. But I'm only putting one ounce in it because I don't know how much is actually in there and too much, uh, too much oil can actually do some damage. So I've got this uh, injector here. I don't know if you can see it too well, but it's got graduations on it right here. I've got it set to one ounce, which is where it's at at the bottom of the uh, tube here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to un unhook my low side line I'm going to hook the injector to the low side line and we're going to uh, let the low side draw this in you might see the gauges rise slightly but uh, I'm going to just put some of this in here when you fill this up fill it up to the bottom of the threads otherwise you're going to end up squirting it everywhere and making a mess. You draw your attention over here where I'm going to be. I'm going to come over here. And you're going to watch that blue blue line right there. We're going to pick up our oil injector. Yeah, it sounds like that compressor is a little on the low side. I'm going to put a little bit of oil in it. Maybe that will quiet it down a little bit. You want to tighten this up. Then you want to turn your valve off here. You're going to pull your coupler back. Alright. You're going to put this on in its place. And you're going to hold it up like this and you're just going to squeeze it down in there. Nice and easy. We're just putting oil in it. We're not putting any dye in it. We're just putting oil in it. And we're just going to crank this down until it goes all the way down to the end and then we're going to take it off the car and put our low side back on. It'll take a few minutes for us to hear any results if there are any. Because it's got to circulate through this accumulator through the system. So it takes a little while for it to get to where it's got to go. You want to just kind of hold it here for just a second. Make sure that all the oil's down in it. And then you want to go ahead and pull your line off. And then when we're done, we'll put our 
low side hose back on and we'll open up our, our low side and we'll take a look at our readings okay and see what our readings look like since we put some oil in it yeah about the same all right let's add it second can of free on we're not going any more than that with this car all right so we're going to put our second can on there's our first one over there we're going to put our second can on this is self-sealing this uh, can is so if you had to measure it out as far as weight goes you can do that all right we'll hook our hose back up Sounds like it's trying to work. All right, let's open up our flow side. We're good to go. We're gonna get you on the gauges again so you can see what we're doing. All right, let's open up our tank. See if we can get some more free on in here. This is can number two. I'm going to go check the uh, temperature and see if our temperature is getting cold. I'm going to finish up with just this can right here. We'll put two cans in it. Then we got to let it sit for a few minutes. We're going to listen for a hissing noise. The hissing noise is probably going to be where our pressure is leaking out of. Being that we didn't put any dye in the system, we don't know where it's hissing from, but we can get a good idea of where it is. The compressor is working okay. I think maybe uh, if it... I'm not sure. Our gauge readings are looking good though, so that means that uh, something's going on. So let's finish putting this can in. our cans in so we've got two cans of freon in the system our readings are looking normal turn off the side here. all right let's give it a minute to do something while we're doing that let's go look at our thermometer our noise is starting to go away, so it was low on oil. We only put an ounce in it, so if we need to, we could put another ounce in it, but I don't want to put too much in it because I don't know what's left in the system. Look at that. Two cans were within range. All right, look at that, folks. We are within range on our Freon. We only had to put two cans in it. And it is freezing cold in this car. I am not joking. It's freezing cold. And our gauge wants to go lower so we're just going to let it sit we're going to let it do its thing i'm going to listen for leaks and uh, we're going to watch our gauges and see if our gauges drop sounds nice and quiet i can tell you that much sounds very good here's our gauge readings keep in mind it's 88 degrees outside now So our gauges are right within spec after only two cans of Freon. You can see our bubble here. We don't have anything going on in our bubble. 
Sounds gorgeous. Take a look down there. There's our compressor down there and it's working great. Yes, sir. So let's go ahead and shut it down. We'll leave our gauges plugged in. We're going to shut it down and do a static test. Static test is we're going to see if those gauges drop off. We're going to count it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the air conditioning off. You might hear the compressor click off. Now we listen and we watch. Now our gauges are going to equal out because we turned off the system. So don't, don't be alarmed by that. Uh, see what we want is we want those gauges to be even. If those gauges are even, then that tells us that our system's sealed and we don't have any leaks. But if, let's say this gauge goes to zero and this one stays up we got a block in the system so that's what we're looking for we're looking for equal out of our gauges on either high side or low side doesn't matter but when we take our gauges off we got to have the car running because we got to equalize these gauges out otherwise these lines are going to bust off of here and you're going to lose a hand yep let's listen Nothing on the high side. Let's walk over here and listen to the low side. Our gauges have leveled, so whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. That just tells you how much condensation's in the air right now. Check our lines back in there. Our lines coming up front here to our pressure switch. Condenser's looking good. We can look through the grill and see our condenser. Look through here and see our condenser. The only thing I hear is the freaking birds. There's our horns. Behind it's our condenser. Everything looks good. I think we got a win here, folks. Let's look at our final gauge reading. So we got 61 on the low side, about that on the other. All right, let's start it back up and see if our gauges level back out like they were. And if they do, we can go ahead and disconnect the system. Before we do that, though, we're gonna take our can off of here. I'm gonna take our can off of here. our center hose back up to the middle here. Alright, make sure our lines are still shut down. Alright, I was going to start the car back up and let's watch those gauges drop. I know you can't really see a whole lot from your vantage point, but I'm doing the best I can here. You can see a little bit from there. Right. 
Now our gauges won't move till I cycle on the air conditioner. So I'm going to turn the air on now. You should see these gauges drop. This one will go up and this one will come down. Let's see if we can listen to our AC compressor cycle. I think I might add another uh, ounce of oil to the system because I still hear a little bit of a noise coming from that. on this car being I don't know what's in it and I don't want to cause any damage to the system since the system's working really really good right now run the idle up so we can get the oil circulating through the system and we'll do one final check of the gauges and call it done Let's go check our temperature. I had the door open so the temperature is a little high in there, but it should drop. Even though I just shut the door a few minutes ago, it should drop back down to within our cold range. Oh yeah, that system's perfect. There's nothing wrong with this system. It's a noisy compressor. See that? We're back down into the 40 degree range where we need to be. 
I don't want to get it any colder than that because we don't need it in this climate. But actually, you know what? We're getting down under, we're getting down into the 30 degree range, so I think we're good. Yes, sir. So this will do it for uh, AC service on your Mustang. Doesn't have to be a Roush Mustang; could be any Mustang. I uh, hope that uh, you can get something out of this as far as understanding how the system works and everything and all that good stuff. Um, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, if there's something that uh, you want me to try to get my hands on as far as uh, showing you, uh, go ahead and let me know down below. And no, I am not tearing apart the dashboard on my Escort. I had somebody comment a while back about how to get that uh, fascia panel off the uh, escort and there is no way on this planet i am doing that and uh, other than that we're going to shut her down here shutting your valves off now once you shut your valves off this is when the fun part happens because you're going to have uh, freon in your lines from the job but as long as the valves are up, you're not into the system. So if you hear hissing noises from your gauges, it's just normal hissing. Don't worry about it. So what we need to do is we need to uh, evacuate the system. And I think we can do it this way. Go ahead and open up the high side. We'll get the high side drain down. See, we're not letting, we're not releasing any coolant into the system. We're just releasing the pressure off that valve. Once this gauge gets down to zero, notice this one's not moving. When this gauge gets down to zero, we can go ahead and pull this line off. And it won't bust us in, in the knuckles. It might be a little warm though, but it won't bust us in the knuckles. Alright, then we got to do the same thing on the low side. We're going to go ahead and open up our valve on the low side. That one drops pretty easy. Leave your valves open when you take your gauges off. That way you don't damage your gauges. Let me come over here and pull your cap off of there. Make sure your lines are down below the vehicle. Don't do like I just did and leave your line laying on the car. Make sure you put your caps back on. You want to make sure you put your caps back on. job is not complete until you have all your AC caps back on your lines and uh, for reference if you want to you can take your cap off and stick it on the fender closest to the line that'll make sure that you get it put back on because if you try to put your hood down it'll not hood close all the way because it'll land on the caps but uh, thanks for watching we'll see you next time